Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my tutorial channel. It's Daniela Tran here and today we are going to continue to work on some more uh, practice problems that collect us from the IFM exam. And this is the advanced level of section 1.2. Alright, so for problem, only four assets A, B, C, and F are being traded in the market. Uh, this table represents the four assets A, B, C, and F with their return, expected return, and variance of return. An efficient portfolio with an expected return of 7% is formed by A, B, C, and F. The weights of A, B, C, and F are 16.09%. 1.15%, 3.45%, and 79.31%, respectively, find the expected return of the efficient portfolio formed by only A, B, and C. Solution New ways. So, here, first of all, when we consider a portfolio that consists of all of these four assets, we have the weight. 16.09, 1.15, 3.45, and 79.31%, uh, respectively. Now, if we drop F, we have to reweight the three assets A, B, C. So the new weights for A, B, and C, respectively, is 16.09 over 20.09, 1.15 over 20.09, and 3.45 over 20.09. Uh, Here, 20.09 is the sum of the weight of A, B, C from the original portfolio. So that's how we reweight the portfolio. So now we have an, uh, the new ways. So you have to use traditional method to find the expected return of um, the efficient portfolio formed by only A, B, and C. So we got 16.09 over 20.09, which is the weight of A, time return of A, plus 1.15 over 20.09 time return of B plus 3.45 over 20.09 time return of C and we got 14.7% so this is the um, expect ret uh, expected return of the new efficient uh, portfolio formed by all the A, B and C alright let's look at problem number 2 for two risky assets A, B uh, excuse me for two risky assets X and Y and a risk free assets F, you are given assets X, Y, and M, expected return 20%, 15%, and 18%. The standard deviation is 10%, 5%, and K, where M is the market portfolio. In addition, the correlation co uh, coefficient between the return of X and Y is 0 0.16. Determine K. A market portfolio is formed as a linear combination of X and Y. Linear combination here means like, uh, we have like uh, the weight of X and Y are uh, together is 1, and uh, the weight of X and Y are uh, positive. So um, M here is the market portfolio, and M is formed by a linear combination between X and Y. So I'm going to call M is equal to AX plus 1 minus A times Y. Here, 1 minus A and A are the weights of X and Y respectively. And the sum of the weights is, of course, 1. Uh, so um, in order to determine K, we have to determine the standard deviation of M. And in order to determine the standard deviation of the market portfolio M, we have to find the variance of M. So let's write out the formula for variance of M using this equation. We got, um, uh, but first let's find the weight. We got expected return of M is 18%. Expected return of X is 20%, and expected return of Y is 15%. The weights are A and 1 minus A respectively, so we got A is 60%. And the variance here, we got sigma square M is equal to A square sigma square of X plus 1 minus A square sigma square of Y plus 2 times A times 1 minus A times sigma X times sigma Y times rho XY. 
Here, 0.6% is A. Uh, sigma square of X is 10% square. Sigma square of Y is 5% square. Uh, the weight of Y is 0.4, so this is 0.4 square. And we got rho of X, Y is 0.16. So from here, it's very easy to calculate the variance because all of these information are given. And then we have to take square root of the variance in order to find the innovation. So the innovation here is 6.6%. .6%. Problem three, you are given the return of the only risk free assets is 6%. The return of an efficient before your P has an expected value of 8% and a variance of 2.25%. The return of another efficient, uh, efficient portfolio Q has an expected value of 10%. Find a variance of Q. All right, so this is a new type of problems. And in order to solve this problem, we have to pay attention to the keys for efficient. So, the first question come to your mind is when is a portfolio or an asset called efficient? So remember, um, we have the capital market lie, and any asset or portfolio that lies on the capital market lie is called efficient. So in order to determine efficient portfolio or asset, we have to, you know, construct the capital market lie. And uh, just use basic li um, college algebra. In order to construct a trade line, we have uh, we have a couple of different ways to do. One of them is using the slope and the um, point. So we use point slope form. Um, central limit. Uh, excuse me. This the capital market line is a trade line that crosses the x-axis at the risk-free axis where the slope of the is the sharp ratio of the market before you right so the capital market line going through the point zero rf where the slope is the sharp ratio of the market before you is expected return of efficient uh, before you is equal to RF plus phi M sigma E, right? This is by uh, Pond's law form. Uh, phi of M here is the sharp ratio of the market portfolio. RF is the risk free return. Um, R, uh, RE here is the return of the efficient uh, portfolio and sigma e is the standard deviation or the volatility of efficient portfolio. And here we have two points on the capital market line, P and Q, because P and Q are both efficient. So let's look at P first. Since P is efficient, uh, so P should satisfy the equation of the capital market line, right? Uh, the expected return of P is 0.08 which is 8%, so I have 8% here. RF is given at 0 0.06 or 6%. Phi of M is not given. And the standard deviation of uh, P is the square root of the variance of, of P. So we got square root of 0 0.0225. So from here, we have a linear equation of only one variable, which is phi of M. So just solve for phi of M, we have 0.133. This is the sharp ratio of the market portfolio and is also the slope of the capital market line. Now with the slope 0.133, we are going to test Q. Q is also an efficient portfolio, so Q should also lies on the capital market line. Um, the expected return of Q is 10%, so I replace it into expected of RE. RF is 0 0.06. The sharp ratio is uh, 0 0.133, which is far out from the previous line. Sigma of Q is not given. So now we have a new linear equation of only one variable. 
To solve for our sigma q, we got 0.3. This is the standard deviation of the efficient portfolio q. And then we find the variance by just square it. So the variance of the portfolio q is 9%. See that? See that? Problem 4. You are given the return of the only risk-free assets F is 4%. The return of the market portfolio M has an expected value of 8% and a variance of 0.64%. The return of uh, portfolio A has an expected value of 3% and a variance of 0.01%. The return of portfolio P Excuse me. The return of portfolio B has expected value of four percent and a variance of 02 percent. Uh, and the last information. The return of portfolio C has an expected return of five percent and a variance of 09 percent. Which assets portfolio is are efficient? So. Remember, in order to. Uh, verify whether the assets or portfolio is our efficient we have to figure out whether is uh, uh, is or they lie on the capital market lie so the first step of all contract the capital market lie and then to justify these three uh, portfolio here the risk of assets is given uh, the market portfolio M has given the expected value and the variance so let's write out the uh, equation of the capital market lie. Um, phi of m here is uh, the sharp ratio, and the sharp ratio of the market lie is calculated by a percent subtract four percent over square root of 0 0.64 percent, because that is the expected return of the market portfolio. Subtract the risk free assets return over the standard deviation of the market portfolio. So here we have phi of m is 0.5, and this is the slope of the capital market lie. Now the capital market lie is a trade lie with the slope 0.5, and uh, it goes through the 0.0 RF. So using um, the point slope form, we got expected return of the efficient um, before it is equal to RF plus phi m times sigma e and now we have the equation right so uh, in order to see whether a portfolio is efficient or not efficient we have to see whether their expected return and uh, volatility satisfy this equation so let's look at a b and c if you look at a and you plug it in 3% here and 0.01% here you're not gonna have um, the uh, equal sign here because 0.03 is already less than 0.04 so there's no way we can find a positive value of sigma e so a is not on the capital market line a is inefficient uh, then look at b expected return of b is 4% so if we replace 4% into e of re we got 4% cancel with 0.04 so sigma e is 0 but here sigma e is 0.02 which is not the same so b is not on the line b uh, doesn't satisfy the capital market line and now if we look at c we got 5% subtract 4% is 1% divide by 0.5 is 2% but here we got the variance of 0.09%, so it's not correct either. So we got A, B, C, none of these is efficient. None of A, B, and C is efficient. So we don't have um, any efficient portfolio here, except F. Problem 5. Only, risk, uh, only two risky assets, X and Y, are being traded in the market. Um, and here we have a table of uh, X and Y and their return, expected return and variance. The covariance between Rx and Ry is 8%. J uh, has, uh, I think G or J or I'm not good at name, 
has five thousand dollars and she's want to invest all of her money in an efficient portfolio with minimum variance. Short selling is not allowed. Here, whenever you read short selling is not allowed, that means the weight of any assets in the portfolio cannot be negative. It should be between zero and one. Uh, it cannot be negative and it's, uh, can, it cannot be over one either. So whenever you see short, short selling, you have to be very careful. Find expected return of this portfolio. So here, first, I'm going to call A is uh, the weight of X and of course 1 minus A is the weight of Y because we have only to assess in this portfolio so P is AX plus 1 minus AY and we want to minimize the variance so let's write out the formula for the variance sigma square of P is the variance of portfolio uh, it is equal to A squared sigma square of X plus 1 minus A squared sigma square of y plus 2 times a times 1 minus a covariance between x and y and covariance is given at a percent sigma x square is 4 percent sigma y square is 16 percent you see this is a quadratic equation of a right this is a quadratic and of course the um, the graph of the variance equation should be a, a parabolic uh, And um, so, in order to minimize the variance, we are going to take the factor of the variance with respect to a, so that we can find out the value of a that minimizes sigma square p. Here, is sigma square p by using the number given is 0.04 a square plus 0.16 1 minus a whole square plus 0.16 a times 1 minus a, and now. Just take the first derivative, take partial uh, take the first derivative of uh, uh, sigma square p respect to a. We got 0.08 a minus 0.32 1 minus a plus 0.16 minus 0.32 a, and set this equal to zero. We got 0.08 a minus 0.16 is equal to zero, and we got a is equal to two by solving this equation. But a here is two is is greater than 1 and short selling is not allowed if you didn't read carefully short selling is not allowed you might end up to be a is 2 and, and 1 minus a is negative 1 and end up to have a wrong answer but here short selling is not allowed so a has to be between 0 and 1 here I'm attack a is 1 because I'm trying to minimize the variance so I'm attack the graded number in the range that is um, close to 2 so I, I'm going to take 1 because 1 is the graded number between 0 and 1 so let's take A is 1 so the weight of X is 1 and of course the weight of Y is 0 that means like here we invest this money on in only X so the expected return of the portfolio should be exactly the expected return of X, which is 20%. So that is how we find this problem. And if the question asks like, how much money uh, she should invest, should she invest it in X, then the answer should be 5,000, because we invest all of the money into X. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my video and if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Um, subscribe. Um, thank you so much. See you next time.